What's going on internet? IG back again today. Okay, so here's my scenario. For the last like five years, I have used to death and enjoyed Google Play Music's uh, cloud storage situation. Let me explain myself. Google Play Music opened up this service years ago where you could dump up to 50,000 songs into your Google account. It would store them and you'd be able to make playlists and do instant mixes and all this stuff and have your music wherever you were. You could store the music offline on your device as long as the app was supported on your device. And uh, basically it just gave, uh, oh, and there were automatic clients that would live on your Windows or Mac desktop. And I think even some Linux desktops figured it out as well, where it would scan your music library, upload it to the cloud, sync up your playlists with things like iTunes and manage it all pretty uh, automatically. To me, that was huge. And I enjoyed the heck out of that service, but two things. First of all, Google Play Music and the cloud storage solution that they have for your own music is gonna be shutting down. We don't exactly know when, but we know that it is end of life. They kind of stopped making improvements to it and it's kind of starting to feel pretty old and crusty at this point. Um, so the question then becomes, oh, and then second thing is that there are always privacy concerns with all this type of stuff. And the fact that, um, that Google owns not only the analytics of what you're listening to and when and uh, where and all that kind of thing, but also your music is technically stored on Google servers, which by extension becomes kind of part of Google's data. Now, from a privacy standpoint, I didn't, that's just really didn't deeply bother me. Um, but as we trend more towards trying to become more privacy conscious as, as a culture these days, um, I started exploring the options of what would it look like for me to self host my own uh, cloud collection of music, but still be able to get instant radio mixes based on my own personal music, uh, be able to have metadata matching, be able to listen on all my devices, including mobile devices, offline synchronization, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and what would allow me to do that in a way that wasn't handing all of my music over to another company? I didn't really like the idea of a streaming service either just because I like owning music that, that I want to listen to and I'll still benefit from Spotify, the free version every now and again, but I wanted to kind of be able to have my own music and know that I was the one that was storing said music, but I could access it anywhere. So uh, a while back, like probably over a year ago, Plex reached out to me and said, would you like to give Plex a go? So they provided me with a Plex Pass and they said, just go try it out. I kicked the tires around a little bit. I set up something just on my laptop that lived at home and it was pretty good for a little while. But I realized if I wanted to really make this a serious bet, I needed to jump right in. So here are the steps that I took to replace Google Play Music with Plex. Okay, so here's what you're going to need. And I've got some notes here to try and help me through this because I'm gonna try and trim it down as, as brief as I can. So here's what you're gonna need. You're going to need either a NAS, uh, a network attached storage, or you're gonna need an old computer or a spare computer that are just hanging around, not doing a whole lot. Um, so for the NAS side of things, Plex recommended that I try out a network attached storage from the guys at Synology, which fun fact, Synology actually had reached out to me a little while ago as well. And we started conversations about what that could look like. So with the help of Plex and Synology, uh, they sent me the disk station DS218 Plus. This is a pretty small, low profile uh, NAS that is uh, very power efficient. It has two hard drive bays that you can put in basically whatever size hard drive you like. And, uh, and it's dual core processor, two gig of RAM that is expandable. And, uh, and it just looks relatively sleek and, and minimal. Um, so, the good thing is that this particular network attached storage works really well with Plex because the system that the NAS runs on, the login console Synology's DSM, has a very simple package manager that you can go in, download and install Plex on the network attached storage and it's all very, very seamless. Now, if you have a spare computer hanging around and you don't want to have to go out and buy a NAS, then you can do the same thing. Uh, probably what I'd recommend doing is getting like an old computer that's not doing a whole lot and that has a decent hard drive space 
um, and install something really, really lightweight on it. So go have a look at like Ubuntu server or something that's like very lightweight and you can actually download and install Plex media server very, very easily onto that. Okay, so I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. So Synology sent out this drive and, uh, and it was very, very easy to set up. It's literally just you power it on, you plug in the hard drives into the hard drive bays, plug the Ethernet cable into the back of your router and follow the little link to connect to the drive for the first time through a web browser. And that's literally it. It's gonna do some updates and then it will let you install whatever packages you want to. There's a bunch of different packages on Synology's DSM that you can download and install, very similar to how you would on a Linux distro. And, uh, and it's a very simple point and click kind of interface. Um, so thanks to Synology for that. Um, but the process remains the same if you're doing it on an old computer. You would just open up the package manager of whatever distro you're using, look for Plex Media Server, download and install that. Once you've got Plex Media Server downloaded and installed onto the NAS or onto your old computer that you're going to use as a server, what you're gonna to wanna to do is point Plex towards whatever, wherever you store your stuff. In my case, what I did was I had an external hard drive that had all of the music that I have, plugged it into the back of the Synology NAS, did a simple USB transfer from one folder to the other, and boom, we had all of my music sitting in a folder on the hard drives inside the network attached storage, and I simply pointed Plex to scan that folder for changes. Now, here's where the magic happens, and you can go one of two ways. What I would recommend you do is definitely check out the pros and cons of a Plex pass because there's there's two minds about this a plex pass is going to give you a bunch of fantastic automated features that match and in some ways surpass what you would get from google play music or apple music or spotify in terms of uh, being able to create instant mixes being able to do uh, automatic lyrics being able to do very good metadata matching being able to sort things out by genre being able to have offline playback on an offline synchronization on a bunch of different mobile devices. And it doesn't just apply to music either. So if you're thinking along a similar route for your movie collection, your TV collection, uh, or even a collection of live to uh, free to air channels, then the Plex Pass could be immensely helpful with all of that stuff. And it's like five bucks, I think a month, which for the features that it gives you, uh, it will match and surpass, in my opinion, the controls that you will get through the Google Play Music uh, service. But basically, once you have created a library in Plex that will automatically update itself with any new music that you add to it, you now have access to your music anywhere you go. So you can go and download the Plex app on your Android or iPhone, and you will now have access to all of your music wherever you are. Now there's a lot more to be said about the like appropriately uh, firewalling your NAS drive and setting up security and that kind of thing. That's not this video, but a decent NAS and also a decent a Linux distribution on an old computer should have some relatively sane uh, security defaults out of the box. Okay, now I said there was uh, I said there were cons to the Plex Pass as well, and it depends on what kind of person you are. So if you're the kind of person that is moving away from Google services altogether because you just hate your privacy being invaded, then the Plex Pass does have a very well-documented privacy policy on exactly what information, metadata, analytics that they take to be able to provide some of that automagical servicing. Uh, so for things like metadata matching, obviously they're going to need to ping the metadata that's on your files with their servers to figure out you know, to give you the appropriate metadata. Same said for song lyrics and stuff like that. Now it's not, it's not named or tied to you in any way, it is anonymous, but it's one of those things where if you're wanting to be completely off the grid, then I would suggest you could either get the Plex Pass anyway for some of the other features and disable things like automatic metadata matching uh, and disable the features that you don't want. Um, or you just skip the Plex Pass and you just deal with your music and look after the metadata yourself. And um, you know you can still access and stream your own personal music collection that you're hosting wherever you are. You don't need the Plex Pass to do that. Now, for me, 
the privacy concern is not so much about analytics and metadata matching and that kind of thing. For me, it's about actually owning the data that I'm using uh, and not relying or being reliant on a particular company to provide that data back to me. And so right now, Plex is just the middleman that helps serve that data out. There's other services out there, but Plex is by far the most polished and most convenient of all of them. Okay, so there's two downsides that I can see to this process. Once you've got all of this set up, the only things that so far I'm kind of still figuring out is that uh, trying to synchronize your playlists, either through recent versions of iTunes or uh, Google Play Music itself, trying to export and import those playlists from Google Play Music to Plex is proving to be a little bit of a challenge. Probably the best thing I could recommend is using a service like Soundiz um, because they can pull in playlists and music sources from a bunch of different places and then export them to in a way that service B understands. So you could plug it in from iTunes or from Apple Music or Spotify and then spit it out and it would try and match it up with Plex. But there are limitations around what you can do for free. And again, privacy becomes a bit of an issue there as well. So playlist synchronization is something that's a bit iffy. The other thing is going to be how streamlined this is moving forward. So depending on where you get your music from, whether you buy it on iTunes, whether you rip a CD, wherever you get your music, you still have to have an efficient way to be able to um, like upload or synchronize folders between your PC that you're working on that you get the music from and the NAS or the old computer that's gonna store your media library. So for me at the moment, it's like a kind of a clunky um, automated uh, backup that I've got going between the, the NAS and my computer, but it's not ideal. And so I'm still gonna try and, um, I've still gotta try and streamline that a little bit. But thanks to those two technologies, a network attached storage slash old computer and Plex with or without the Plex pass, you can move your playback and your music management from something where Google can own and uh, enable and disable a service whenever they like in Google Play Music to something where you own and host and use the files that you own and you can stream them anywhere you go. And so to me, that's a big win. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I know this isn't the most detailed tutorial I could ever give you, but I'm hoping that the principles that are in the video can kind of help you work this out for yourself. And there's lots of great content from Plex, from Synology, from a bunch of others who can help you uh, whittle down the nitty gritty of how to set up something like this in your own context. But yeah, hopefully the concepts of this you can apply to whatever stuff you've got lying around. That's probably my favorite part about how flexible and versatile this whole thing is. So let me know what you think in the comments. If you have any suggestions of how to make those playlists talk to each other, I'd appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, yeah, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.